Welcome to Champions Heart. You can't play boxing. Featuring boxing addict Johnny Farace and friends from super fans to superstars. Let's roll. So I started boxing as an amateur in Australia. I had 11 fights there and I fought in a few uh, local and uh, national tournaments, but I did okay. Um, but for me, the amateurs and the Olympic dream and all that was never my goal. Uh, I, when I decided, uh, I was 28, I decided I want to take boxing seriously. I want to like have a proper go at this. Uh, I sort of weighed up, you know, my age with the fact that the Olympics have been coming around every four years, and I thought, nah, I'm not, I'm not about the Olympics. I'm, I'm straight up turned pro, and so I used the amateurs as a means to find my confidence. I wanted to have at least five fights in a row where I could walk in the ring from start to finish and be focused and not overcome by adrenaline. Because what I found initially when I first started fighting was I'd be in the second or third round and be like, oh, okay, I'm in a fight. Like, what did I learn? What, have, what has my coach taught me over the last few weeks? Because so, you know, that first initial part of the fight, you were just reacting to everything. You're so pumped full of adrenaline and you, you know, it's hard to focus sometimes. So once I uh, felt that, that confidence and that calmness and I was able to, you know, set up game plans and stuff like that, I was like, all right, I'm ready for the pros. So I turned pro probably about a couple of years ago. After, so after 11 amateur fights in Australia, I moved to America, had another nine here, uh, 20 amateur fights all up. And uh, yeah, here we are. I was doing Muay Thai for fitness because, you know, I needed to do something to be fit and, you know, have the body to be able to get the swimsuit jobs and um, win the competitions and all that sort of thing. So um, when I first started doing pageants, uh, I found that going on stage it was like a thrill adrenaline and you know over the years of doing them it sort of lost its edge a little bit i had it down pat i knew who i had to look at when i had to twirl my dress you know it the performance aspect of it kind of lost its uh thrill if you will but then when i found boxing it gave me that back because you know you have to think in split seconds of time put on a show you've got people everywhere cheering and screaming and um yeah you have to perform and it's you know, you live your life in the gym, training, and really the fight is before you even get in the ring. It's in the gym, the preparing for it. And it's the same really with pageants. And I guess the pageants also really helped me having to be on stage and answer questions and thinking and, you know, just being comfortable up there. That really helped prepare me for boxing, funny enough. And uh, through the pageants, when I, you know, was winning them and traveling all over the world, um, to compete, I made a lot of connections that really helped me in boxing and really was ultimately how I was able to move to America to pursue my dream as a boxer. So that was cool. So I got kicked out of home when I was 15. Um, my parents were great people and I was a great child, but we just didn't see eye to eye on how I should be raised. <laughs> um, I have I'm very independent and uh, if someone tells me that I can't do something, I'm sort of like, I have a, a very strong sense of belief that I guess most people probably don't have. So um, I was very determined to go and achieve everything I wanted to achieve and nothing was going to stop me from being able to do that. So I was in and out for probably a year. By 16 I was living um, out of home with some friends and never looked back and it was the best thing I ever did. I had an amazing teenager life and 20s and it, you know, I traveled since I was 18 all around the world, lived in Spain, Greece, America, um, England, uh, yeah, and I've, I've had an incredible life. At the moment, I'm training half between the Fifth Street Gym in Miami Beach and half between Centeno's Sweatbox Gym here in Davie. And between the two gyms, I'm getting everything that I need and more from training. The coaching's amazing. The 
environment's amazing. I'm surrounded by champions every day. Um, getting some really good sparring. Maureen Shea, uh, former world champion, probably soon to be world champion again. Um, Carolina uh, from Argentina, um, great sparring. Logan Holler, um, who trains here with me at Centeno's as well. Yeah, really good work. Uh, Zender Zayas, huge inspiration for me. He's only 17, but we met when he was 14 and he came down to the Fifth Street where I was training at the time to uh, spar me. He was little than me at the time. And I couldn't even see his punches coming. They were so fast. I was like, who is this kid? <laughs> and uh, been a fan ever since. And now he's in the pros and he's killing it. Youngest pro to ever sign with uh, top rank. And uh, yeah, now I'm training with him and the other guys here. And uh, yeah, learning a lot. Honestly, I don't have a time limit on what do I want to achieve in boxing. I really just want to see how far I can go. And my goal is to win a world title. Um, and defend it a bunch of times as well. I want to hold that world title as long as I can and just have some really good, really challenging fights that will make me the best fighter I can be. Um, even if it's not for a world title belt, I want to be challenged. I feel like because, you know, I, I'm, I didn't come from a background of fight sports and, you know, growing up with boxing since I was five years old. I'm just some regular girl that at 25 I decided to start boxing and. I, I'm doing it and I'm living my dream and I want to inspire other people that think oh I'm too old I've left it too late oh I don't know if I can be good at this like yeah you can if you want to do it like go for it and and you know that really drives me to be as successful as, as I can be like I'm just some girl that got kicked out of home at 15 sort of didn't know what I wanted to do traveled the world trying to figure it out and then I did decide I wanted to do it. It was very unconventional because everyone was like, why would you want to be a boxer? You've got this modeling career and blah, blah, blah. But that's what I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. so I did it. And I had this huge amount of self-belief when people were kind of, you know, I'd walk into a gym and everyone would look at me like, oh, okay, yeah, you can spell like the beginners over there. <laughs> awesome. um, and yeah, look at me now, you know? So that really drives me to, to prove, you know, to myself really that's all I care about but it, it gives me a bit of a kick to be able to prove to other people too like look at what we can do here if you really want to. Uh, one of my biggest mentors in this sport is Chris Algieri um, from when I was in the amateurs he's been a good friend of mine he's guided me through everything the ups the downs the things to look out for because there's a lot of those in this in this world of boxing and uh, he's the type of guy, he's tough, he's skilled, he's extremely dedicated. And, you know, he comes from a background like me where he had other options in life. He's very educated and um, he didn't have to box, but he's passionate about it and that's what he wants to do. And he's a champion and he takes fights with everybody. He's fought Manny Pacquiao, he's fought Errol Spence. And okay, he lost those fights, but like, he put himself out there and he fought good fights in some cases. and. Yeah, he, you know, he put Amir Khan to the test, for real, and uh, he never backs down. He'll, he'll take the challenge and he'll throw his whole life into it. And uh, yeah, he's a real inspiration to me in this sport. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs>